Kim, whatever you moved just went into the middle of the screen. All right, Kim, let's go. And we don't have audio right now. Black History Month is important to me because I feel that our culture and our people need to know more about their history. To me, it kind of builds character to always know where you came from. And it kind of show like, you know, the positive role models that came, you know, before us. Important to, to carry on a tradition of learning from our culture, that we must continue to learn from generation to generation, so we just don't forget. Hello and welcome, welcome, welcome to Next Door's 2022 Black History Program. Hello everyone and families and staff and those that have joined in to this year's Next Door's 2022 Black History Program. So I would first off like to start off saying that I wanna thank everyone for joining us this evening and um, just prepare yourselves and open up your hearts and your minds to receive the presentations from our presenters this evening and also to enjoy and have some fun with your next door family. So before I get started, I wanna show you something. Everybody received a drum kit at home. And so in that drum kit, you're gonna get a skin and you'll get a round cardboard tube and you'll get some things to decorate. So while you're rating and you're enjoying yourselves in this program, start to, um, with your ch children, start preparing those drums because you're gonna need them with our second presenter who was Brother Butler. And so without further ado, we're gonna move on to our first presenter who is Truman McGee, who's the owner of Funky Fresh Spring Rolls. And before we get there, I would like for you all to join me and so we can start off and sing Look Every Voice and Sing, which is also known as the Black National Anthem. So if you know it, please sing it with us. Lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven rings. Ring with the harmonies of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise high as the listening skies. Let it resound loud as the rolling seas. Sing a song full of the faith that the dark has taught us. Sing a song. Full of the hope that the present has brought us, facing the rising sun for our may be begun. Let us march on 
Till victory is won. Let's all clap our hands. We thank you for joining in again. Let us march on in victory. Let us hold on to our culture and our history, not only from the past, but in the present and the future with our children as you bring them here with us at Next Door to learn, to be educated, to be enlightened, and to be strengthened so they can become who they are meant to be in this world for tomorrow. So without further ado, let's move on with our first guest of Frankie, the owner of Funky Fresh Spring Rolls, Truman McGee. Let's give him a hand. Two, one, two, Truman McGee, Sunday. We got Truman Phoenix. We're about to get our roll on. Hope you're ready. Good day, Next Door Foundation. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? I see you. I see you over there. You better wake up. You better wake up. This is Truman with Funky Fresh Spring Rolls. And guess what? I'm a former Next Door Foundation parent as well. So I'm like y'all. I hope you guys will enjoy your spring rolls today because they are going to be bomb. So my origin story started in this very area, 53206 zip code um, in Milwaukee. You know, they say one of the most uh, poorest uh, zip codes in America, but my family, I would, I didn't know. My family was rich in values and rich in morals and, and our community is. So I didn't really see it as much or it was just part of the, just part of the environment. Um, so as a kid, I'm the youngest boy out of 11 brothers and sisters. So um, I have a little sister, but everybody else is older. So I got to grow up with a lot of heroes right in my household, which being my brothers and sisters. And um, me as a young kid, just being the youngest boy also, seven boys, three girls, um, I always wanted to be better than all my brothers and sisters at everything. You see, you know, they, everybody's older than you and they, everybody gets, gets to do things that you can't do yet. And you're like, well, why can't I do it? Just because I'm young. So I wanted to be the best at basketball. I wanted to be the best at football. I wanted to be the funniest. I wanted to dance the best. And I also wanted to, you know, be a Hello. great cook. A lot of my brothers and sisters cooked, and my mother, the matriarch of our family, um, she was the ultimate cook. And oh, okay, I, I love being in the kitchen. When I was a lot of, when I was the same age as a lot of you, I was in the kitchen with my mom. So I started cooking at five years old. I started to learn how to make what any five-year-old likes, which is breakfast, lunch, dinner, everything. Right. So my mom taught me how to cook scrambled eggs. And once I learned how to make scrambled eggs, I went to learn how to make pancakes and then waffles and then biscuits. And then just kind of grew from there. I just wanted to learn how to make everything. Um, I remember when I was around seven or eight, I was infatuated with school lunch. Okay. What's your favorite school lunch out there? If you're like me, you love chicken patty day, chicken patty day or chicken nugget day by far my favorite day pizza day okay it's all right chicken patty day the best to this day do you agree i know it. i know you do so she got me a cookbook and i made like my first meal as a kid was chicken patties you know from scratch using fresh fresh chicken whatever so from there i was just enamored by food and i just wanted to create If you're a wrestler, you know that you have to watch what you eat and you have to be conscious of the food you eat. So I started to learn healthier meals to make. So in that process, I fell even, I fell even more in love with food because I realized 
food is more than just to, you know, to get full or to enjoy. It's, it actually fuels you. And food can affect your mood. Food can affect your body. It could do so many different things. So my love of food went a little deeper. It went to like, all right, how could I make foods that are delicious and also can fuel you as well and not make you feel tired or sleepy or whatever. So that was like just a, a cliff note in my, my journey. As I graduated through high school, Milwaukee Tech is a trade school and Milwaukee Tech kind of pushes kids to get into the trades when they graduate, which is great because we need a lot of trades people. But for me, I loved cooking. And at the time, I didn't know anybody that was a chef or going to school or even looked like me. The people that was coming to my high school were tradespeople, were plumbers, carpenters, sheet metal workers, electricians. So naturally, I felt more comfortable, felt safe getting into a career path that um, people that looked like me were already in. This story is important, is I want you to show you guys like, no matter what you want to do in life, you know, you could do it. And you, you're, you're talking to someone from the same neighborhoods as you. It's very important for you guys to see this. So um, instead of going to what I love to do, which is cooking, going to culinary school, I got into a safe career, which was getting into new trades. And I didn't love it, but I enjoyed working with my hands and I like to make money. During that time, it, you know, it kind of put me in a little depression. During that time, I was at my heaviest. I was over 300 pounds. I was laid off. I was unhappy with my career. Um, being a single dad, even though we co-parent, still being a single dad is, it is what it is. Single parent is still tough, you know, if you don't have two parents in a household. March 1st, 2012, I decided to take my life back into my hand. I call that my rebirth day. That's the day I say, you know what, Truman? You're going to do the things in life you want to do and enjoy it and have fun. And I haven't worked for anybody since then. From there, I started to work out, eat healthy. I lost a bunch of weight and I um, had so much fun doing it. I thought I could start my own business. I thought like, well, hey, I could just make them what I'm eating, which was like massage kale salads, which was like stuffed turkey burgers on like a, a whole wheat bun, or I had this sweet potato and black bean wrap, like literally a burrito. And the sweet potato and black bean burrito was so good. I'm like, man, this is interesting. I've never even had anything like this. Like, what if I put this in an egg roll? Oh, put it in an egg roll. I'll say, all right, we got to stay healthier. Let's not deep fry it. Let's bake it. Or that's pan seared, right? And I was like, wow, this is really good. So now the year is 2016 going into 2017, and I went full on with my business. I started, I created Funky Fresh Spring Rolls LLC. I uh, found me a commercial kitchen. Um, I had all my focus on the food, and now it was just about action at this point. So what I would do is take every opportunity to sell spring rolls. If it's at a farmer's market, if it's at a festival, if it's a catering, if it's for deliveries, whatever, I, I got organized and figured out my schedule. And then I just kind of went on a full-on attack. And more importantly, I got people around me that believed in my vision and one that wanted to help. So I started hiring staff, which is great things. I always work with wrestlers, so I always had a bunch of wrestlers who wanted to come and work. 2015, we rolled like 30,000 spring rolls. And by the time 2019 came in the Sherman Phoenix, we were doing over 100,000 spring rolls. I've hired over 10 people around that time and business was looking great. 2020, things were looking real promising, but we all know what happened in 2020. Um, right when I, we had plans to get a food truck and we had all these plans to expand, COVID-19 came and changed all of our ways of life, even, even to this day. And in 2020, March 16th, um, I had to figure out like what we're gonna do because all the, our restaurants was closed, the, the world felt like it was shut down, and it was not much a lot for a lot of restaurants. So two things I had was determination, 
and I had a lot of spring rolls in stock still. So put those two things together. I said, how about we sell frozen rolls? And me and my son, Truman, my old, your next door foundation alum, alumni, me and him went on Facebook Live and we just, hey, you want spring rolls? We're bringing to your house right now. And that's literally what we did for two days. We sold all the rolls. And at that moment, I realized selling frozen rolls would be the key to the next part of our life. And we just kind of elevated our business to becoming a, not only a restaurant, but now a food manufacturer. But once we open back up, even though we lost sales from the restaurant being closed, we are able to recapture the sales from selling frozen rolls. From, so for the rest of the year in 2020, we sold frozen rolls and hot rolls simultaneously and literally sold more rolls than we did in 2020 than we ever did, even during the pandemic. 2021, I say, you know what? I got even bigger plans. I want our stores to be in the grocery, I want our rolls to be in the grocery store. I thought this would be a great option. 2021, we got our rolls into Outpost, we got them into Syndix, River Rest Co-op, Iron Fist Fitness, uh, West Dallas Cheese Shop, and uh, several other smaller stores, and, get, and just create another stream of revenue for our business. Around the same time, I got approached by Paul Amos Pizza, which is a huge pizza manufacturer, which makes hundreds of thousands of pizzas per day in their location here in Milwaukee. They wanted to partner up with us, and I believe that we could make a great partnership. So a year of negotiations happened, and in 2022, we announced last month in January that we partnered with Paul Amos Pizza for a nationwide distribution deal, which is gonna help increase our frozen brand and take it to new heights farther than I could take it to myself. So, you know, this story is a story of just being relentless, believing in your dreams and really having a community to get behind our product. Like, even though I'm the brand, I'm the face behind Funky Fresh, um, this, wouldn't be hap this wouldn't be possible without having, I try to call it my Funky Fresh Nation or just a community around you. You know, like the, the old saying, it takes a village to raise a child. It's the same for a business. It takes a village to raise a business, you know. And what I appreciate about um, the Next, for Next Door Foundation is they're that village for all of our kids and to, to help us get to new heights in life. So um, I appreciate you guys and I thank you for being the village that we all need. We are in our funky, fresh fun factory. That's what I like to call it. Four F's. Funky Fresh Fun Factory. Okay, actually, I just made it up. And we're going to cook some rolls for you and me. We're going to show you how to cook rolls at home, too. The first thing you want to do, as always, you get in the kitchen, you want to wash your hands, okay? If you're cooking this at home, you're going to need an air fryer, 10 minutes, 400 degrees. That's all you need. Okay, if you're cooking it in the oven, oven is a little bit longer, 450. Make sure it's preheated to 450. Love it. So now it's only one thing left to do, and that's eat it. You know. <laughs> That story almost brought tears to my eyes. Let's give Truman a hand, please. Um, I was a teacher in the 29th Street location when his son, Little Truman, went there. And I do remember knowing Truman when he wrestled and his son, Little Truman, wanted to wrestle. And I used to see him in a hallway and let him take me in a double leg take down, take down in the middle of the hallway before he went home with his dad or his mom. So I really appreciate him for telling his story. It's an inspirational story. It's a, a story that lets us all know that we shouldn't despise small beginnings and be able to persevere through tough situations because it is important that we do come together as a village so that we can help each other elevate. Um, so saying that, if you haven't been down to the Sherman Phoenix, I try to get down as much as I can. I love his spring rolls. They, they're amazing. I love them with the sweet chili sauce. And um, I get some frozen, frozen ones as well. I put them in my air fryer. So if you have not tried Funky Fresh Spring Rolls, you are really missing a treat. 
And um, also, I just want to thank him for giving a shout out to Next Door and being a Next Door alumni and telling his, sharing his story about his family. And so for the rest of you that are out there and you have a small business that you're trying to run and you're trying to get started, don't give up. Promote it and put it out there. There are people out here that will support. And I'm really encouraging all of us out there that do look like Truman to use our black dollars to elevate black businesses in the communities that we live in. Because when we do that, it opens up doors. He, you heard him say he hired 10 employees. And so we can turn that once business in a corner, we can then elevate it and turn it into a franchise. And then what that does is it brings more revenue within our communities. And then that puts more families and people at, into business together. And then it helps families who are unemployed to get work. And so when we put it in that, that way, what it does is, is it puts us as a great community again. Because I remember as a child growing up, the corner stores were owned by black men and women. And then that started to disappear as I got older. So we can get, back, get that back when we see people like Truman and other people that are starting businesses. So like I told you before, if you got that drum at home, get that drum ready because the next gentleman that you're about to meet, Brother Butler from Heal the Hood, he's another gentleman that started off small because he wanted to get out here in the community and bring us closer together and, and talk about the, the violence that's going on that plagues some of our communities and our areas and the lack of togetherness that we have. And so what we need to do is get these drums, open up our ears, and get ready to hear some great stories and some great drumming from Brother Butler from Hill the Hood. Let's go next door. Hello, hello everybody. Welcome to Next Door Foundation's Black Excellence Month 2022 virtual program. Get yourself some claps and snaps wherever you are right now. Get yourself some snaps and claps for tuning in and being here with us today. Um, my name is Brother Butler and it is a pleasure to be here today for multiple reasons. Um, my son used to go to Next Door Foundation when he was younger. I have a niece who came up through the Next Door Foundation on 29th Street. I have family who works for Next Door Foundation and so it's just honestly a pleasure to watch Next Door so into the community, especially around this time of the year and everything next door has going on with books and literacy um, and just building the brain power of children so i'm gonna ask for one more round of applause claps and snaps for next door foundation give it up for next door foundation y'all for being a great organization as i said my name is brother butler um, and today we're going to dive right in we're going to talk about three different ways we communicate in traditional african history and in traditional african culture one of those ways is through the drums one of those ways is through written history and the third way is through oral history right so we have our drums we have our written word and we have our spoken word so right now you see a couple of drums here with me and we're going to have fun today making a little bit of noise and i'm gonna need a little bit of participation from you all out there in virtual land so be expected for a little bit of instructions uh, so we can have some fun today um, and if we are ready to go i'm gonna give our thumbs up and we're gonna dive right in this drum is called a djembe it's called a djembe, D-J-E-M-B-E, -E, djembe. And these drums traditionally come from West Africa, places like Senegal, places like Mali. And the drums are so important to culture and to black culture and to African culture specifically because it's used for communication and various forms of celebration as well. 
Um, the drum has different patterns and rhythm that symbolize love and marriage. That can symbolize a birthday celebration. It could symbolize a change in the um, politicians at the time or the kings and queens at the time. It may symbolize sadder things like funerals and mourning. They could also symbolize things like war. If the encroaching enemy was getting close, you would have the warriors bang those war drums and that would symbolize everybody, hey, it's time to get down with the get down. But today we're gonna just talk about a few different patterns that we use to make um, to make our music with drumming. It's a pretty easy concept like anything else. Once you learn the basics of it, then you can kind of build on those basics and you become more fluent with it. The more that you practice, the more that you train with it. Um, so we got four patterns that we're gonna learn today. Four patterns. And again, these basic four patterns are gonna take us to another level as we make music. Our first pattern or our first tone is called bass. You hear that deepness, that's that bass. All right, that's, that bass is what carries. That's like your heartbeat, right? So when you got that bass going, you gotta keep that in mind that that's the heartbeat. That's gonna keep our rhythm, that's gonna keep us flowing, right? Then you have what's called song. And that's generally done with your fingers close together. So not spread out like this, not cupped together like this here. You ain't gonna make no music like that. But have those fingers nice and tight together, those primary four fingers. All right. Okay. The next one, we spread those fingers out a little bit. Now you don't want to stretch your hand out like this, right? When you're hitting the drum, you're going to break your finger or something like this, but just loosen your hands up. Let those fingers spread out a little bit. All right. And the last one is called variation. It's called variation. Super simple. And it's using your fingertips like that. It ain't about making the loudest noise, but I'm going to show you why those variations are real important. So again, let's go over those tones again. Bass, song, slap, variation. Bass, song, slap, variation. Bass, song, slap, variation. Boom. I think y'all got it at this point, right? So we're going to play a couple of different rhythms, and then I'm, I'm going to give y'all some directions on how we can interact and we can hang out and play together with this musical thing that we got going on. Because making sounds and making music is not always about the drums. We can use our body parts, right? We can stomp our feet. We can sing. We can do all of these different things to make sound, make music, and make joyful noise. But nonetheless, here is a, a, a very basic rhythm um, where you can hear all of the different tonations, and then I'll add in the variation at the very end and you'll see how that plays a role just use your small fingertips like that right Now that's just, you know, that's just so I'm just getting myself warmed up up here. Y'all ain't going to flex too hard on y'all on the virtual program today, but just giving a small idea of what that accompaniment sounds like with the different tonations. Now, I'm going to play a small rhythm without the variation, and then we'll add variation in so we can see how that energy sounds and how that makes sense to the whole accompaniment. So let's say we're doing a basic rhythm like... Now let's add the variation with that finger tick action. No variation. Variation. All right, so that is our djembe. I love playing djembe. I've been playing it since I was a little kid. But I have another drum here to my left. This is called a conga. This is called a conga. And these drums are traditionally played in the Caribbean islands like Jamaica, Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, Trinidad, so on and so forth, right? These are drums that they play in the island areas and it has such a smooth tone to it. Same pattern, same tones, but such a different sound to it, all right? Bass, song, slap, variation. Bass, song, slap, variation. Put it all together. Okay, 
right? And sometimes you can mix the two up. Why not show out a little bit? It's 2022. Why not add a little bit of razzle dazzle on everything that you do and combine it all together? Yes? There you have our first form of communication that we come to talk about today, and that is sound, communication through noise, communication through drumming, traditional West African and Caribbean drumming. Now the next piece we have is going to deal with the written and the oral tradition of storytelling in African culture. We're going to take a pause for the cause, and the next time you see this face, we're going to be reading some books, y'all, so stay tuned. Hey again, everybody. I hope that you all enjoy making noise. I hope that you're learning about the African drums and the culture and the history of the communication through drums was a dope and amazing experience. I hope y'all had fun. Now we're gonna move to the second and the third piece of our communication through African culture today. And that's through oral tradition and oral speaking as well as written word or books or poetry or playwriting. Today, we're gonna to talk and read from two children's books that I wrote myself. Yes, y'all, I wrote children's books. I have four children's books. Today we're just gonna read from two of them. Um, and I love these books. They were my first one and they came out in 2020. Um, and they are called Destined to Be Me. We have one for young ladies and one for the young men as well. So we're gonna read a couple excerpts from these books here. And I just have some other dope, amazing books on display. I love because readers are leaders. And the more you know, the more you grow. So. With that being said, here is Destined to Be Me by Ajamu Butler. And we won't read every poem in here. We're just going to skim through a little bit. I hope that you all were able to receive your package and get your copies of these amazing books. But our first poem is going to be called My Crown. My hair grows, aiming at the sun. My curls dance around my head. My curls are having so much fun. My nappy roots tell a story of riches and glory. I love what's on my head. Knowledge of self teaches me that I am a queen. Love your hair no matter what. That's what my mommy said to me. Afros, locks, cornrows, not stop. My hair grows, aiming at the sun. My curls dance around my head. My curls are having so much fun. And then you got the little girl. She got her crown on and she got the sun shining on her with her beautiful self. All right, let's see what is another one we can read and skip to. This is a good one, when I grow up. When I grow up, what a great woman I'll be. I will be educated and bold and I will succeed. When I grow up, I will travel the globe. When I grow up, I will own my own businesses and homes. When I grow up, I might become a politician or a biologist and study plants. I, I am unstoppable. When I grow up, I will stick to my successful plan when I grow up. Oh, that's so dope. I just love the power in words. And I'll read one more from this book. And this one is called I Am. And these books are all about speaking positivity to yourself. So if you hear these words, I want you to really understand and soak in the words of these books. I am. I am a warrior like Rosa Parks. I am a queen like Nefertiti. I am happy and I love myself from my hair to my feet. I am a daughter. I am a friend. I am a scholar indeed. I am a child of God who can overcome anything. I am perfectly me. And that's destined to be me for girls. So let's switch the pace up and let's see what we got for our young brothers. Let's see what we got for our young men. The next poem we're going to read from Destined to be Me for our young boys is called I Love My Skin. I love my skin. I'm a caramel king. I love my blackness. Yes, indeed. My parents always tell me that the sun has kissed my skin. They even taught me all about the richness of my melanin. They say my hair is divine and tell me I should love my color because it's uniquely mine. I love my skin because I am a chocolate colored king. I love my blackness. Yes, indeed. And I love that picture there, just rocking his crown. So just so royal and just kingly. I love it. This piece is called My Mom is the Best. My mom is the best. She is so kind. She makes sure we are safe and she always gets me to school on time. I love my mom. She is so funny. When I do my chores without her asking, she always gives me money. 
My mom is so smart and she has a huge heart. My mom always draws with me because she loves art. My mom is the best. She is so kind. I have met a lot of moms, but none like mine. And then look at the picture. I love their gaps. They so cute. They so cute. So we're going to read one more from this book before we wrap up my portion of our presentation today. And this poem is called I Love My Daddy. My daddy told me that we are kings. My daddy told me that I can grow up and do anything. My daddy told me to always be kind. My daddy reads to me a lot. He says it'll help strengthen my mind. My daddy has locks just like me. My daddy is a great cook because he knows my family likes to eat. My daddy is my friend. He keeps me safe. My daddy keeps a smile on my face. My daddy told me that we are kings. My daddy told me that I can grow up and do anything. And there you have it, guys. Those are a few excerpts from Destined to Be Me. And I hope that you enjoyed the rest of this virtual black history program. Thank you all for tuning in. Bye. <laughs>
I am one of the EHS teachers at our capital location. I'm a 17 year veteran of our next door agency. So I've been there for a long time. I've seen a lot of things. So if you see me in the hallway, I am a teacher there and just speak and say hello. I'm there to help support you, answer any questions and point you in the right direction so that um, you can, I can get you to the right people that can help you with your needs. And also, if you did not pick up a bag at next door, um, I hope that you are able and talk to your advocate or somebody and see if they can get you in the right direction to get you some spring rolls and get you a drum kit. And so if you're in the building tomorrow, please talk to your advocate and see if they can get you in the right direction to get you a bag with some spring rolls and a drum kit, because we want you to be able to be able to also taste the spring rolls and do the activities. Even if you didn't get to do it today on this program, it's still a fun opportunity to spend time with your family, which I know you all do, but an activity where you get to work with your hands and build some language with your children and talk about the building of the drum. And even if you remember some of the things that went on with uh, Brother Butler, you can talk about those stories and then you can make your own stories in your house and do your own drum beat. Say your child doesn't wanna take a bath and you make your own drum beat and it's, the, it's time to take a bath drum beat or there is not time to go to bed and you make your, it's time to go to bed drum beat. But you can always use it to help you reinforce some of those things in your home, just the way we reinforce things in our classroom through singing and reading and dancing and um, just jumping around and getting some of the energy out that your children enjoy at, when they're with us at next door. So again, we're about to sound off. So thank you. We appreciate you. We love you. And again, thank you for coming and joining us in our Next Door family and our 2022 Next Door Black History program. extremely empowering for not just me but for my daughter you know to see like there were strong black women represented in her history and that she comes from a long line of strong black women and even my son i think it's important to teach black history month to the new generation and new children because some of them are not um, informed. Their parents haven't informed them or the people of their community haven't informed them. And they see like all the bad things and the, the troubles that, you know, black people are going through now today. And it just shows them they can be whatever they want to be. Black history is a part of American history. So it's awesome to know where we've been to see where we're going and what we can overcome and achieve through our gifts, talents, and education. I think it's important because it helps us to remember the sacrifices of our ancestors. It helps us to understand um, all the dates and the events and the people and the progress that we made, um, such as um, Civil Rights Movement and Dr. King and Harriet Tubman and Ruby Bridges and all the important things that happen. It makes me proud of the skin I'm in. It makes me proud to say who I am today. Uh, I feel like how my parents came up, I wouldn't have been able to be in the role that I'm in. 
So that's what history is to me. We got Obama, you know, Martin Luther, Maya. So after all these great, some of the great people right here, they helped me become who I am today just because of the things they did in the world. I'm very happy with black history. I'm glad that I can think more of it than just slavery. Black history means learning our history, learning our ancestors, and teaching our kids now what black history really means. I feel it's important because as a minority, you know, we always want to connect back to our roots. And it's important where these kids know where they come from, where their ancestors are, um, understanding parts of like family trees, uh, understanding that we're not the same on the outside, but we're the same on the inside is very important. Uh, African American or Black history means celebrating our accomplishments. I want to be a dentist and I love being a dentist. You gotta take your teeth and then sometimes dentists gotta take your tooth out. I want to be a police when I grow up. What do you want to be? A police. You want to be a policeman. Now tell me why you want to be a policeman. Because I'm going to get a police dog. I want to be I want to be a doctor and I want to be somebody to help people cross the street. So I want to be a doctor. I'll be a, I want to be a police. What do you want to be when you grow up? A tooth fairy. And why do you want to be a tooth fairy? It's, the tooth fairy can come to get you money and take you to take care of animals. And then I got to catch them for they can be safe. And then I got to have to stay in the cage. And then we got to pit up. Water, rivers, cave. What do you want to be when you grow up? An engineer. You want to be an engineer, huh? Yes. So tell me about that. Why do you want to be an engineer? Because I'm going to build a bridge. Hello everyone, here is the um, Black MKE celebrates and promotes Black businesses, events, cultures, and advancements in Greater Milwaukee Area um, app. As you can see in the lower left, if you use your smartphone camera, you can click on to the QR code and it will take you there. Thank you again for joining us for our next door 2022 Black History Program.